decided to have my portrait <gasps> painted. How oh, cool! It's a total ego trip then, is it? It's <laughs> funny. That's so funny. Yeah. But you just asked me if you could paint my portrait. Mm, and that's I said, right. Okay. <laughs> but you'd be surprised how many people say yes and then when the due date comes they, they freak out, they can't handle it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's quite amazing. When I finished the painting, um, in prosaic language, I was assailed by many emotions. One of them is joy, because it's finished, it's done, I set out to do something and I've completed it. Another one is relief, that it's sort of okay, it looks like Jan, I did go some way towards making the painting how I originally thought of it. And it's also... It forces me to look at the difference between the dream, which was the idea of painting Jan, and the actual reality of what finally emerged after we did our sittings and I wagged my paintbrushes around. Um, and there's another feeling too, which it's the dark side. The dark side is you look at it and you say, well, baby, you did your best and that's as good as it gets. And... I find that whenever I've done a work, which reinforces to me the reason why I paint in the first place, um, which is joy for the act of painting rather than having a finished product. Welcome to today's episode of Coffee Break and you've been watching my friend Irene Gower and myself exactly 10 years ago and it's a very very confronting experience but I've had the portrait rolled up behind the wardrobe for quite a few years because Living with teenagers in the house, it was like um, <laughs> the surveillance camera was keeping an eye on them, like mum was watching everything. So I realised I don't have to do that anymore because I'm empty nesting and they don't live there anymore. So basically if I want to do something, I can do it. So today I'm here at Breathing Colours. In, it's on Darling Street, Balmain and to catch up with Chloe and to ask her some advice on framing because not only does she make jewellery here and sell artworks by a variety of artists uh, but she's also a picture frame. So Chloe thanks for helping me out on this. No worries Jen. Now it's quite a big portrait. It is quite a big portrait yeah. 
and I was a bit worried that I wouldn't have a wall big enough to hang it on. So my idea was to crop it down a bit. Okay. But I need your opinion on this. Okay. I've got I've got my means permission to do whatever I like. Right. But um Okay. Well, um I mean I think it's a fantastic piece the way it is, and I think in a lot of ways it's a bit sad to crop down an artist's work. But um I mean, I think there are a few different things that we could do. Um, there's quite a bit of empty space down the bottom here and maybe on that side. So should we have a look and see what it's like if we, if we did crop out those sections? <laughs> Some random bits of sheet and card to have a look at it. So that's what it would look like if it was cropped there. You could do something like that, um, or maybe even, because you, you know, I, I'm, I suppose I'm looking at it a bit from the eye of an artist as well, that you want to still keep an interesting composition, because when she's painted you, she hasn't put you directly in the middle of the painting, she had you in this corner and then other things happening down the bottom. So maybe what you could do is bring it across even a little bit more. Something like that, and then if you see you're in, you know, sort of the bottom left corner, and then you've got a bit of space up there. But it's such a dramatic painting. You know? It is very dramatic, and when you you crop it down like that, it becomes very full in that small space. Even though that's quite a large painting on its own, from what you've cut it down to. Should we pull them off again and see what it's like again without them? Yep. I was coordinator of a women artist in a work called Swan. Oh, right. So that's the significance of the Swan. Oh, yes. We actually created a global network. Wonderful. But then with September 11 and all the public liability insurance problems, yeah. they couldn't do it anymore. It's a shame. I really painted it and it's been um, held up with two dowel sticks, right. but it really does need stretching. Yes, I think if you stretch it onto the frame, um, a canvas frame, it would look much better. Um, my business partner, David Vogel, he does the picture framing around the corner from here is his workshop, and so he would build a big frame and stretch the painting over that, and it would even out all the bumps and lumps and would look really, really nice. Chloe, I think you've convinced me not to crop it. I think I'll yeah. have it as it is. But the problem is, how am I going to get it home? Well, I think we should walk it down the street to your house, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be a, that'd, be, that'd be fun. I think it'd be fun. We could make another documentary about all the people's reactions as we walk down the street with this giant painting of you. And I could put an ad for coffee break on the back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Want more information? See coffee break. <laughs> okay, you're on. Sounds I'll good. I'll commission you to do the job. All right, lovely. <laughs>
And what's his? <coughs> well, these are all just um, drawings, and this is the back of it, and the front of it, and ideas, and um, yeah. Are you making the ring for a specific purpose? Um, I just need to start making, and I mean, this is not, you know, the mecca of my making, but it's a start because I haven't made for a long, long time. Yeah, so. it's good for your soul to make something. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's so unique. Everything that everybody makes is unique as well. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit, a bit of a cliche. Um, all the ocean waves and stuff. It's a bit of a cliche for me. So. I don't think so. I think ocean waves are kind of eternal. Yeah. <laughs> So hi Lauren. Hi. So you're an artist as well? Yeah, I'm an artist and an art teacher as well. So um, at the moment I've got an exhibition that's opening next week, so in Breathing Colours, and so I'm working towards my works for the exhibition. That's sad that art teachers only get to make art in the school holidays. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit, but I've been trying to work on it throughout the term as well, but you know, time constraints. So I've been working my butt off these holidays. Okay, so what, what are you working on? Um, at the moment I'm working on a series of rings. So these are a few of the ones that are still in the processes. That one's still a bit wet. Um, so basically um, the rings are based on some paintings that I started doing um, as well. So here's Chloe's got one. I've got two hands. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm to it. So I've just been working with, um, you know, some paints and there's some ink and charcoal and things like that. There's paper that's been laid into it as well. And then um, I've scratched in some shapes and things like that. And I guess those shapes are the things that have kind of inspired the domes of my rings. So these rounded shapes and things like that. Um, these double areas as well, you know, are appearing in some of the rings as well. Um, so I'm definitely expanding on the um, the drawings, the 2D works, and expanding them into the 3D. Um, and I'm trying to make these also um, kind of textural and stuff like that, so that way they work with the paintings as well, so they're kind of mimicking the paintings throughout um, the jewellery. So you're having paintings and jewellery? Yes. So I'm um, exhibiting with a friend who, she's a painter, um, but I'm trained as, um, I guess, jewellery and object artist, um, but I've been dabbling in the painting area as well. So. And do you enjoy teaching art? I love teaching art, so um, yeah, I really do. Well, I don't think that you should say that you're dabbling in paint, you're not Aww. dabbling in paint. <laughs> What You're an I artist. Doing? You're an artist. Yeah. You normally make jewellery, but... I never paint, though. <laughs> it's a really interesting phenomenon that people don't like to say that they're an artist. Yeah. You know, it's kind of... Oh, it's hard to explain. Yeah. But, you, but you are an artist. Yes. <laughs> It's funny though, actually, because Lauren and I have been talking lately, <laughs> and Lauren's saying that she feels like she's not making art at the moment, that she's just making things, that there's something has changed in the process of her making, and she doesn't see the works that she's producing as artworks, and we couldn't really come up with what it was exactly that had changed, and why these pieces didn't seem to her as artworks, but the last pieces were, but it's an interesting discussion about, um, you know, I what... I think it's got a lot to do with the way that we were trained at uni as well, you know, we went to um, an art school where it was all about conceptual art and things like that, so the concept was really the main thing, whereas with these artworks that I've been doing, they actually started more as just an exploration of colour and texture and things like that, and I really got, I think, caught up in the texture and, you know, some of the effects that came out of that, and that's what has then turned into the jewellery, so I think because it's not probably as strong in concept as previous still... bodies of works have been, it's not the concept that's the strongest part of it, it's more the actual, um, I guess, making the process. making process, yeah. But it, it's still a very viable way of working, it's yeah. just a different, a different thing to do. Yeah. And making things is so good for your soul. 
and you I say, oh, I made this, whether it's... It's so nice to make stuff, though. Like, you know, I spend, you know, most of my time at school helping kids make their works and things like that. So when you actually get time to make some of your own, I've spent nearly these whole holidays working on my artworks and people have been asking me, how's your break been? And I've been like, fantastic, it's been great. I've been making art the whole time. <laughs> so it's really nice. It does, it makes you feel good. No, the brooch isn't mine. But you can buy ones just like it at Breathing Colours. <laughs> <laughs> It's really nice of me too having Lauren and Carl in here making things because I never get time to make anymore because all our other lives overtake our making mm. and so you know running the gallery and the shop and everything here I run out of time to make my own, make my own work too so it's really nice having these guys in the studio making things and there's a creative vibe going on which is really nice. But Chloe you do enjoy your work don't you? Oh yeah I do absolutely and that's you know I'm still using my creativity, it's just going in different ways, like coming up with new displays and different things with the business and the shop. Yeah, I love it, absolutely. Um, but, you know, I do miss making a little bit too. So. Well, while I'm here, can you take me on a little tour of your shelves, please? Yeah, absolutely, my new shelves. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> So this is my latest creative project, these new shelves that I made with um, my business partner, Dave. Um, so we've just been thinking about a new design for the display on this wall and came up with the idea of floating shelves. So we put these shelves together and installed them a couple of days ago and we just did the first display on them yesterday so it's all very new and exciting. Um, so this is, it's mostly the object based display but we've got some jewellery in there as well and um, we're trying to put lots of bright colours and vibrant things into this display. At the moment I think we have 40 object artists that stock their work with us from all around Australia, um, Sydney, Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, a few different places, yeah. So you really are a patron of the arts? Well yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's very hard for artists and there's not that many um, venues that you can display your work and um, you know, for the less commercial type work, um, more abstracted, um, unique pieces, there's not a lot of places that you can sell it. So it is nice to provide a place um, for people to be able to exhibit and sell their work. Once putting all the work on this display, the things that jump out to me the most are the glass pieces by Catherine Liss. There's something about the display really makes the colours jump out. So, um, like this piece here, in one of her Wonka vases, one of the most popular items of hers that we sell. Um, so she's done them in different colours. We've got orange and red, and then up here we've got an orange and yellow one. And a blue and green one up the top right. So she's a Canadian artist originally, um, but she's based in Perth at the moment where she's working as an assistant um, glass maker in a studio there and also making her own pieces and exhibiting her work and selling in different galleries. These pieces down the bottom here are by Jen Hall. She's originally from Scotland um, but is based in Melbourne now and she takes these photographs. A lot of them are from Melbourne but all around different travels and then she turns them into pieces of jewellery. So she mounts them onto plywood and then puts the brooch pins on the back. And the details are just beautiful, they're really nicely finished and she puts a little tag on each of them and they're beautiful objects. This piece here is by Kate Bishop. She's a local artist. Um, 
she's made several of these beautiful necklaces and I just love the lines, the geometric lines that she's got here with the interspersed colour through them. Um, she actually used to design playgrounds I think and so you can kind of see um, that coming through in her work. These ones here are um, Zara Collins. She's another Sydney based artist. She's been very inspired by Asian art. Uh, she's done a lot of trips over to Japan, I think. I'm not sure exactly where, but um, she uses this paper in her bangles, the um, Japanese paper, and then coats it in resin. So she's got these pieces. She also makes some beautiful earrings with the paper on them as well. These ones are really cute. This is Katie Jacobs. She's a Melbourne artist and she's made this series of salt and pepper shakers of Australian animals. <laughs> I think she's done seven of them. I'm not 100% sure of the number, but they're in limited edition runs of 20. And um, she's got these cute little wombats, which just look so beautiful. And the, the salt comes out of his nose on this one. <laughs> I love them. They're very sweet. <laughs> She's got some bananas here as well, and, and then these are little penguin salt and pepper shakers. Uh, these cups down here are by Deb Taylor, and she writes all different words across them. So at the moment we've got easily swayed and conditions apply, but she does other ones with them. Um, there was drink, drank, drunk, and um, there was a black sheep, midnight cowboy, and then you know other cuter ones like loved and cherished and those sort of pieces they're really sweet they just feel lovely in your hand they've got the little dimple that your thumb fits in nicely and the outside is just really smooth to touch so great objects those ones <laughs> those ones are mine i make these they're a lot of fun everybody has a reaction to the chocolate freckles because we've all got connotations from our childhood about chocolate freckles and whenever you wear them everybody always comments on them um, people say they get hungry looking at your ears with the chocolate freckles on them and uh, one of my good friends has a little four-year-old daughter and when I was making them and they were all spread out over the counter she came and said can I have a bite? Can I have a bite? I don't think it'll taste very good. <laughs> but yes they're fun the chocolate freckles they always get a reaction. Yeah you're anyone nibbling on you. <laughs> I haven't had it yet no maybe some point but whenever we put them in the window you can always tell where they've been because there's finger marks always against the glass in that one spot so.